Super cool intro. Truman needs to know what's next. Two, what's next? One. What's up guys, Monty428 here, and today I'm gonna be showcasing the Oppenheimer build. This is a level 80 OP0 build that you can run on Axton and Krieg to go through maps absolutely nuking everything. It really is just a fun mobbing build, but if you want to take it into a higher OP levels, you can try that. I wouldn't recommend it, I don't think it would be as fun or effective, but you do you. If you want to know right off the bat which character it is better on, I would tell you that Axton is probably easier to use it with because of all of his survivability skills and the benefits that he gets with his turret, but I have more fun with it on Krieg because of how intense it feels just running around with his bloodlust skills and his hellborn skills. But I'm going to be showcasing Axton first, so let's get into it. When it comes to the gear that we're going to be using, it's pretty much the same between Axton and Krieg, with a couple of differences between them that I will explain once I get to Krieg, but if you're not sure where to get all of these items, you can check the description for all of the drop sources. First we have the Slagga, which obviously is just for slagging up enemies. You absolutely do not have to slag every enemy, because the raw damage of this build at level 80 OP0 is crazy. Uh, you really only need slag for like armored psychos and badasses and enemies like that. And it's just there to have it. If you want to slag things you can. Then the main focus of the build, the Nuka. I farmed for over 10 hours at the Torg vendor to get the perfect one of these and it just never appeared which really sucked because I wanted to get this video out before Oppenheimer released oh, a whole week ago now. But uh, obviously that didn't happen. So this is the one I ended up taking, it's pretty close to perfect, it's actually really fun to use, and you'll see in the gameplay how it plays out. But pretty much the perfect nukem is Tor Grip, which I do have, and then all reload speed parts, because this can get down to like 4 point something second reload speed. On Axton it doesn't really matter because of all of his reload speed skills and the class mod that I'm using, but for other characters, you will want to have reload speed on your Nukem. This one has a missile speed part, which missile speed on the Nukem can drastically change the trajectory of your shots, which is fun to play around with, and again, like I said, you'll see it in the gameplay. So it works out. Then we have the World Burn, which is just a power crep Nukem that does fire damage. Um, it's just overpowered, so yeah, it's here. Obviously, I have to include it. Then I have the Bada Boom, which paired with the Sham can regen your rockets. And I just prefer that over the Logan's gun because I don't have to switch it out. I can just keep it here. And I just love to rocket jump anyways. It really helps with mobility. And you just have to make sure that you have at least one rocket so that you can regen. With the Sham, you can switch this out for a big Boom Blaster, which Again, I will get into once we get to the gameplay what the differences are. The anti-fection grenade, I don't use these a whole lot because of how much damage I have already. They're really just not necessary to be throwing grenades. But it's nuke themed and it's cool and it's there. The relic, I'm going to be using the Torg Allegiance relic. Gives a little bit extra fire rate to the Nukem and World Burn, which I don't really care about. I just really want this for the mag size because that really does help out with the rocket launchers. The Nukem has a low mag size anyways, and it consumes two ammo per shot, whereas the World Burn consumes one ammo and it has a little bit of a bigger mag, but this does help out, and I really don't need to have any other relic here. You don't need damage, you don't need cooldown, you don't need elemental damage, it's just this. 
Then we have the Expert Veteran class mod. Passes on here, even more reload speed, even more mag size, so that's two huge buffs for the rocket launchers. And then the skills, we got Steady and Pressure, more grenade and rocket launcher damage, more reload speed and a bunch of shield recharge delay. Phenomenal. This is going to be better than the expert grenadier because I don't care about extra grenades and like I said we already have six steady we don't need the bonus grenade damage or the explosive damage resistance doesn't really change anything veteran is the way to go and for the build itself for my spec I'm not gonna go into every individual skill I feel like it's pretty obvious why I picked what I did but if it's not obvious to you and you have any questions, feel free to ask below. And actually, I will say that I did not get these slag turrets because, it, like I said, with the slaga, it's just really not necessary. I would much rather go deeper into the right tree so that I can get grit and I can get Gemini because those are just much more useful for the build. I'm here at South Boss Demon Power and I'm going to enter this first fight by throwing both of my turrets down to knock back the enemies with the new skill, which means they can hit me. And I also used the Gemini trick there of reclaiming the first turret as I threw the second one, which gave me a free kill skill. Because I don't need to keep the turrets out there, they were going to die very quick anyways. But that's just a fun way you can enter fights by using the Gemini trick along with the nuke skill. And also as you can see, none of these enemies need to be slagged, they're just dying immediately. But now that I've found my first real fight, I'm going to keep my turrets out for the extra battlefront damage and to keep the other enemies away from me and shooting at the turrets. An Emperor, yay. I'm going to keep pushing on through here and something to note is that there are a lot of different playstyles that you can use with the Nukem and World Burn. You can sit from afar, especially depending on how many missile speed parts you have. You can just stay back and launch them and just kill everything without even having to get close to them. But if you want to actively regenerate your rockets with the sham, then you're going to have to be a lot closer to the enemies when you're shooting the rockets. Which means you are going to probably down yourself a lot because you're never going to have the perfect trajectory locked in as you're running around. It's just it's not really possible like you can get it down for a couple of shots but eventually you are going to down yourself which isn't a problem because you're going to get right back up but it's just something to keep in mind there's assassin oni who i believe resists grenade damage but my rocket launcher does not really care about that it's still going to absolutely murder him we got a little confused here as to where he was because of all of the screen pollution which is one more thing to note because this build on both Axton and Creek will have a lot of screen pollution. But if you are a diehard BL3 fan, I'm sure you won't mind that. Did not get the Emperor from that guy, but that's alright. Just gonna keep pushing on through here, and you can see that I am starting to run low on my rockets because I'm not regening them efficiently enough. So I just start spamming them away here so I can get down to zero and show off how to regen. Because even though we're in the middle of a fight, I can just start running around with my bada boom and regening as I please. And these psychos are just going to be chasing me anyways. Got my rockets back, so now I can keep fighting. This guy is posing a bit of an issue, so I'm going to go ahead and slag him up. There's so much damage there. That's really just not fair for these guys. You throw an anti infection. You can see it just burns them alive. They just never stood a chance. Got the next assassin here. And anti infection is still out, so that guy's dead in the back. Assassin re thought he could push up on me, but I'm gonna take his Emperor and keep pushing on through. I've been observing this siren Lilith since the first and she finds it irritating when others. And here's me showcasing a little more of the range of this nuke gum. 
because it basically just shoots straight ahead. There's really no arch on it. Gonna use Gemini again there for some extra speed. Can't even see what's on my screen there. Accidentally lit myself on fire there, I think, but that's alright. That guy is gonna die from that, anyways. As you can see, I'm really not going down a whole lot unless it's my own fault. Because I have so much shield recharge that it, and my shamish will never go down. Unless, again, I blow myself up. Southpaw. Oh, Got God. a three dog for that. Now taking a look at Krieg, you will notice that the world burn comes before the nukem in the slots, and that is because while Krieg does benefit from explosive damage, he much more greatly benefits from fire damage from his skill trees. So I tend to use the world burn more than the nukem. I do have this herald here, which does not belong here. I just used it for second wins when I ran out of ammo because I did not transfer my bada boom to this Krieg and I just didn't want to go through the hassle at the time. I don't know, it didn't really matter. But what I used for rocket regen was this Kerblaster, which did suck. If you have the patience and are safe enough, it does work, but it's not fun. I have the sham and the big boom blaster, which like I said, I will get into the differences once we get to that portion of gameplay. For the grenade, uh, I have this Bouncing Bonnie here, which I actually got after filming the footage, but I used a purple version, uh, just a purple uh, Bouncing Betty Slag Grenade during the footage. You just want to get a lower level one to make sure you don't hurt yourself. For the Relic, I used this Blood of the Ancients with Launcher Max Ammo, because you don't need the Torg Allegiance Relic, considering how big your max size is going to get anyways with Krieg. So this just helps with having more rockets in general, and of course 52% max health is huge on Krieg to survive. For the class mod, this is going to be a choice that you have to make if you want to use the Power Toast, the Flesh Crunch, or the Blood Blister. The Blood Blister class mod will give you more grenades and more kill skill duration, and of course those both tie into Blood Bath, which is huge skill for Krieg love that skill. If you use the Flesh Crunch, you get a bonus 44% mag, as well as Strip the Flesh, which is more explosive damage. So if you really want to go ham with that Nukem, that will do. I don't expect to taste the blood, and I forget what the other Crunch skill is, if you get the other version of it, but that's the one I have. And if you want to use the Power Toast, you have even more mag size, even more chance to ignite enemies, and these skills are actually really good. Pain is power, so if you're on fire, you take a lot less damage. And, uh, not a lot, that's the, that's the wrong skill, that's numb nerves. Um, when you're on fire, you do a ton more weapon damage. And even if you're not on fire, you get a base 55% extra weapon damage. So this is pretty huge. And obviously the crit damage negative does not matter since we're using rocket launchers. Elemental Elation is a really good skill, although I didn't spec into it. I put those points into this just because I like to melee enemies sometimes. And it's for some bonus reload speed. And it helps with igniting enemies. But if you want even more fiery and mag size, you can spec those into Elemental Elation and get those extra points. So taking a look at the skill tree, once again, I think it's pretty obvious why I picked what I did. There's a lot of skills that you just flat out don't need, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Whenever you're getting into a densely packed area of mobs, you're going to want to start chucking your slag grenades to make sure that one, everything is slagged, and two, you start getting stacks of bloodlust. 
The more stacks of Bloodlust you have, the more damage you will get from Bloodbath. And of course, Bloodbath also helps you with getting all of those grenades back, so you're never gonna run out of grenades. Just wanna keep chucking them and start chaining your kills. I'm running the Sham here in the first section of Sawtooth Cauldron, and I only spec'd into the one skill for more, recharge, more shield recharge delay, which is 2.5 extra seconds, which honestly isn't the worst. I had to spec into it anyways to get down the skill tree, but the Sham already has a really good shield recharge on its own, and every time that I down myself, or I just get down in general, as you can see right here, once you get back up, your shield instantly recharges, so it doesn't really matter. And as you can also see, it is helping me tank a lot of damage. All of their ammo is just going right into my sham. But if you set yourself on fire, which you will do, it will start depleting, which is alright really. As you can see there, even though it doesn't seem like these rockets should be hitting me sometimes, it still will down me and give me a second win at the same time. This happens a lot more on Krieg than on Axton, just because of how much more in your face you want to get with Krieg. I, I love that part, I just love using the Nukem as a sniper, that's fun. And chuck a couple more grenades and just snipe on that. But the problem with the sniping is that you won't regenerate these rockets. And like I mentioned before, I don't have a way to regen my rockets, so once I run out, I run out. Look at all those grenades dropping from Bloodbath, so I'm already back at max grenades basically. Now that I'm in the next part of Sawtooth Cauldron, I've switched over to the Big Boom Blaster. Each of the boosters will give you one grenade and one rocket, which is much more beneficial for the World Burn because it only consumes one ammo per shot, whereas the Nukem consumes two ammo per shot. You still have to be really careful with your shots though, you don't want to just be going ham or shooting off all of them at once because as you will see with this little fight here I have with these threshers, I'm at zero capacity and I'm not getting any of these boosters, so I'm not regenning any of these rockets that I'm using to kill them. It does seem like it would be a pretty cool interaction to be setting yourself on fire and as your shield burns down from the fire that activates the boosters and they will just keep popping out. But from my testing, it doesn't really seem like it works that way. It seems like it has to be enemy damage that makes the boosters come out. Going back to these enemies over here. Finally got a booster. And as you can see, this is a lot more interactive than Axton's gameplay was. You have, to keep, you have to keep track of all of your stacks, and since I'm using the Big Boom Blaster on Krieg, you have to maintain that as well. And you just go down a lot more than you would on Axton. But you also have all these fireballs shooting out, you have blood explosions going on. It's just, it's just more fun to me that way than playing safe with rocket launchers. And here we finally are starting to chain more of the boosters. But I am using the Nukem, so I am still losing one ammo every time I shoot. Overall, if I were to compare the Sham to the Big Boom Blaster, the Sham would definitely be easier to use and keep you alive more, but the big boom blaster is there to use and you know I never, I never really used the big boom blaster so it is fun to just be able to use it for something. And finally I've run out of ammo so this is where it is going to come to an end for Krieg.
And that means that this is the end of the video. So if you enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed the build, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think about it. If you use the build, tell me how it works for you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later.